I'm Jody. I'm here again with Jennifer Adams. Hopefully Hi. you're watching us on our 10 a.m. segment where we're talking about outdoor entertaining and decorating. And now we're talking about how to spruce up a guest room. A guest room or really any bedroom for that matter, for, especially for the summer months and the warm weather that's out. The tips can work year round and also for your kids bedroom, your master bedroom, guest, anything <laughs> that you yeah. really want to do. <laughs> with dogs or without <laughs> dogs because once again my house and everything is dog and real life proof so yeah. very practical yeah. tips so oh, I was going to mention oh. one thing so for our Facebook fans thanks so much for your questions we're going to be answering those at the end of the segment and also doing some more giveaway we are so um, I'm excited about it so to get us started when you're putting together any bedroom in your home you want to anchor it first with the bed the bed sets the the space so don't get your nightstands first don't get your area rugs first I hate to say it, you don't even need to get your bedding first but really start with your bed position and if you have the ability to have the bed on a wall that doesn't have a window above the bed, that's actually a little bit better for sleep. You don't have to worry about drafts and things and the room tends to look better. Now, every rule is meant to be broken. So you don't have to do that, but that's just the best positioning. When you start to put your bed together, well, now once you have your headboard positioned, mm -hmm. in the summer months, especially when anytime it's warmer outside, you wanna dress your bed in layers so that you can bring layers on in the middle of the night <laughs> or take layers off in the middle of the night make yourself a home Oliver <laughs> it's like we might have to dress the bed around Oliver and the, um, We'll start with the softest bedding that you can afford and bedding that feels good against your skin. There's, I get asked all the time, in fact, one of the viewer questions today is, does thread count matter? It really doesn't. It's really in the sophistication of the weaving process of whatever product you're putting on your bed. So get what feels the best to you. Thread count um, can mean all different kinds of things depending on the type of fabrication it is. So when you're making your bed, you start with your mattress and we're going to do a mattress giveaway at the end of the next segment get a mattress that feels good to you typically um, it's nice to sleep on a firm mattress that sleeps like a soft mattress just to keep your aches and pains away mm -hmm. and then when you layer your beds you have your fitted sheet in the US we tend to sleep with top sheets but you know in Europe most people don't. I know they don't Th things are changing because we sell quite a bit of bedding in the UK and we're now getting requests for flat sheets but when you make your bed start with your decorative side of the sheet facing down toward the bed because then when you fold it over you can actually see that hem detail and that tends to be a softer side of the sheet at times depending on the type of fabrication so have that facing down so you can flip it over and see the accent and then if you're using a duvet cover have for the summer have a lightweight fill because I often get asked well down will make me sleep hot it really isn't necessarily the down that's making you sleep hot it's the weight of your insert so there are winter fills and there are summer fills so you get something lighter weight and if you happen to I want to really be careful of no allergens and you can get a synthetic down and those work really well there's so many synthetic downs and they're absolutely great for fills so a duvet cover I like the duvet cover to be washable mm -hmm. because you're touching it with your hands you're touching it with your skin all the time or are the my dogs, dogs. dogs there <laughs> yeah, so I wash my duvet cover every single week so get something that's pretty durable and then for flexibility, a coverlet or a blanket at the folded at the foot of the bed. And by the way, a coverlet can be used instead of a duvet cover if you want an even lighter sleeping experience. And um, <laughs> this Jack's likes. So it, when it's warm weather, mm -hmm. do dress your bed in a, a lighter color tone. It's like a white, a taupe, a linen, just something soft and mm -hmm. fresh feeling in the fall and in the winter that's when you can go towards some of the darker color tones but if you but rules are meant to be broken too if you've got like a charcoal sheet you can bring in some lighter colors and I'll show you how to um, decorate the bed here in a second to make it look like a hotel which is this could be art can I move you I don't know if I can move him come on come on Jack come here come here Jack come here Jack come see me Tempting to make yeah. the bed and just bring the duvet cover all the way up, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing, it's nothing 
bothers him anymore. So then <laughs> you want to take it down and fold it once and then fold it another time. Yeah, we fold it another time. <laughs> with with about your dog. <laughs> that will give it more of a hotel look. And as opposed to having it come all the way up, it just takes a split second to do. And what also does is it airs out your bed from any dust mites or anything that might be occurring when you have a little bit of airflow that hits your bed during the day. Absolutely make your bed every single day. And then when you're layering your bed, try to have two sleeping pillows per person. Because sometimes you want a, a pillow between your legs or just for sleeping flexibility and get a pillow that feels good to you personally. Even if you mix and match the pillows between your sleeping partner and yourself, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure it feels good to you. Because per pillows are a very personal thing. You can have uh, just a regular pillowcase on a pillow or you can have a washable sham that's soft and you can sleep on that as well, or two pillowcases and then a sham. And then when you layer the bed for decorative reasons, I don't know, I'm gonna wake these boys up so I can decorate the bed. Okay, here. Come on, Jackson, come here, come to me, come to me. I think you, it's definitely, the boys are not camera shy. That's, that's for sure. I can decorate around all of them. So let's say you have an all white bedding or an all taupe bedding. Um, and you want to decorate with colors. If let's say you have draperies, draperies are challenging at times and more costly to change out. So take the cues from the other elements you already have in the bedroom. Or if you want to start over, you can have your accent pillows be the decorative shot of color. The key with your bed is to keep it simple so you make it every single day. It doesn't need to be fussy or overdone. But you take the gray, so I'm using gray because gray is in the drapery color, and just doing two oversized accent pillows. We're gonna bury Oliver here. Yeah. <laughs> Oliver. Sorry, Oliver. <laughs> so two accent pillows for a queen, and if you have a king, you could do three or even two. Just mm -hmm. something simple. These could be the accent pillows that you would put on your sofa, any room in your home. It doesn't necessarily have to be just bed accent pillows. And it brings the color, ribbons the color. That's what I was saying. I really like those two colors together. Oh, good. And you said that mud cloth and linens are really popular fabrics right now. And the texture against the soft of the bedding is really nice. So you see it's still a lot of sea of white. So another way to just add a splash of a decorative element is to take a throw. And believe me, there's no perfect way to put a throw on a bed and just toss it at the foot of the bed. And it gives it just a coordinated look when you coordinate your drapery mm -hmm. to your decorative pillow to your throw blanket. And with your area rug, you can bring in all types of area rugs. Figure out something that's really soft. It's the first thing you feel. Mm -hmm. When you step out of bed, you're stepping onto a, a, a rug, hopefully, or a floor. So have it be something that feels good to your, foot, to your feet. It can have a decorative element to it. Oftentimes a softer pattern or a softer color palette mm -hmm. is just more tranquil and also more cooling for the warm summer months. And then when you're dressing your night stands mm -hmm. or any other element in the room, less is more. Because objects on the nightstand can be big dust catchers which will wake you up in the middle of the night, cause allergies and all kinds of things. So when you're putting together your nightstands, you may or may not notice here, I have two lamps that don't match each other. And one has got a linen lampshade and one has a white lampshade. With the white, you could, it does work because of the white of the bedding, but watch what happens when I coordinate the lampshade with the decorative pillows. The whole look ribbons itself together. So look at the difference in that look. So taking color from the decorative pillow into the lampshade and it bled and then the other lampshade matches. I don't have a light bulb in this one right here so I can't show it to you <laughs> turned on. But you also, those two lamps, they not only had different lampshades to begin with, the lampshades pulled them together, but they're also different sizes and that's okay. And the way that I got away with that is by propping the small lamp on books because it's nice if you can finish the heights similarly to each other and the other one sitting just right on the nightstand and then to pull the books from one side of the nightstand over so you have a reoccurring theme I just propped those books uh, with a plant on top of them 
plants are a nice thing to have at your bedside because they, some plants, certain types of ferns and things, mm -hmm. actually purify the air and they um, act as air filters and they bring in oxygen to the room. They're just a beautiful natural element. If you have a faux plant or a plant that's not a real plant, I don't necessarily recommend putting it on the nightstand because it's a dust catcher. They're hard, they really don't serve any purpose mm -hmm. <laughs> other than to catch dust. If you, unless you have a real plant, I would just keep it simple with nothing there. If you really want an accent item, we're talking about summer, so we're up for the summer, elements from the sea, like this is an ammonite, and it's just a fossil. Oh, it's really pretty. A shell, a driftwood, something that's light, summery, and just have one object sitting on the nightstand that goes with your other elements. So I tried to pull some of the tones from the decorative pillow into the accent. You don't really need much more. You can have, you can add more, but I would, the, the nightstand's really not the place uh -huh. to put all of your personal um, possessions and treasures. It's also not really a spot for like kid photos and other things that it can just tend to be clutter, mm -hmm. uh, just having less. It's something that's nice to keep at your nightstand though that helps with sleep is having a glass of water or a bottle of water at the nightstand when you go to bed. I don't know about you, but my sleeping partner, who will not be mentioned, my husband, <laughs> <laughs> not to embarrass him, he snores. And if I, before, is, before I used to shout him, be like, oh, <laughs> stop <laughs> snoring. <laughs> yeah. But I'll um, tap him on the shoulder and say, just drink a sip of water. Mm -hmm. And it quiets him at night. And, and I drink a lot of That's water. a really good tip. It does help. And your pillow matters and your mattress matters. So the mattress we're giving away um, later on today, that's the mattress we sleep on, and that has helped him substantially. I can't claim it's an anti-snoring mattress, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then having a journal in your nightstand drawers, just to jot down your late night thoughts, that'll help put you back to sleep as well. So those are some things for restful sleep. Wonderful. Well, we're going to answer our Facebook fan questions, but while I'm getting ready for that, I would love for you to tell if you missed um, at 10 a.m. This is Jennifer's new book, and it's not even out yet, but t please talk about your book. I really appreciate that it's um, you're going to take all the proceeds um, from the book, and you have a great uh, charity organization that you're donating to. Thank you. And maybe talk a little bit about the book. Thank you. So it's Love Coming Home, Transform Your Environment, Transform Your Life. And all of my author profits are going to help children and families that don't have a place to sleep. Because believe it or not, we take our beds sometimes for granted. There's so many people even right here in the U.S. that are sleeping on floors. So all the profits from this are going back to make sure that we can help as many lives um, as we possibly can through gifting beds. And the book is actually, you can purchase it now, um, it's in pre-sale mode. And so everybody that purchases it right now from the Costco viewing, you just go to our website, jenniferadams.com, and there are a couple different ways, links that you can purchase. And anything that's purchased right now during this viewing um, period, so in all, basically through the month of May, I'm going to personally sign the book. So um, anyway, it's going to a good cause. But everything we talked about from getting your bedroom ready, getting your outdoors ready, every room in the home I address in the book. And it's not just for someone who owns their home. Because sometimes we think our now home doesn't matter, it's our next home that we're really gonna put time and effort and money toward where your best life begins in your home. So there's no reason to put that off. So everything, I think every single thing in this book will apply to you whether you own or you rent even if you're planning to move. There are things that you can do right now that don't cost a lot of money that will really transform your environment that I truly believe will transform your life. We even deal with all the different senses in your body because it all matters in your home. Yeah, so, I, I love that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm so excited <laughs> that it's out. So Great, congratulations. Thank you. So we have some questions that you've sent in yes. when we announced the Facebook Live and then also throughout the airing and we're gonna go ahead and answer some yes. of the questions. Okay, now. so here we go. So Nate said, what kind or color of backsplash do you recommend for dark granite countertop in a light medium toned wood cabinets? That's a good question. So it de part of it depends on if you want to resell your home mm -hmm. or if you wanna stay in your home forever, which um, usually 
when someone says they want to stay there forever, they end up selling to the next year. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, so I'm going to give you tips, assuming that eventually you'll transition out of your home. So I would stay neutral. And right now, what's really trending in home, even the hard surfaces, are lighter and practical finishes. So I would stick with a very light color. It Depending on what color your dark granite is, I'm going to assume it's maybe a black, then I would pull like a, an off-white or a light gray color into the backsplash. If your dark granite has browns in it, mm -hmm. then I would pick a warmer white or a taupe that has a warm undertone. So look at the undertone on that dark color and then pick a light tone that has a similar undertone. So either a cool tone or a warm tone depending on the surface. Okay, next question is from Sean. What's the best paint colors for bedrooms that don't have much light? <laughs> yeah, my favorite color, white. <laughs> that is really going to add a lot of brightness to it. And colors um, come in and out of style and in and out of fashion frequently. White is all the rage right now. But it, every color is in style and in trend in different tints and shades. They all evolve. So if Pick the color that you love first and foremost and pick a light shade of that color. So for example, if you love blue, like an indigo or a navy blue, pick a really light pale blue and a restful tone. If you like green, pick a really soft, tranquil sage. And if you like white, uh, pick a white. We're gonna the next segment we're actually mm -hmm. gonna talk to you about how to pick whites because whites matter. I had seven different whites before I settled in on the white that you see on my walls. And I work with you yes. on your white yes. <laughs> as well. That was fun. We did white via um, camera and yes. <laughs> your photos. And, and then we're also, uh, and so I would stick into the bedroom, I'll stick to the topic here, something lighter and not overly bright because the super bright tones aren't conducive to good night's sleep. Okay, so Danielle said, what are some ways to organize in a small kitchen with little storage? That's a good question and it's typical because most of us don't have, ever have enough storage in our kitchen no matter how much storage we happen to have. So using your pieces that you use every single day, so like your spatulas, your wooden spoons, putting those right on on display and there's a way to do it to make it not look like clutter and okay. we'll do that for one of our Facebook lives. Okay. So actually it was a very good question. I first heard this tip, I was on the set of Martha Stewart's TV show and her prop stylist brought this to my attention. I was like, that's such a good tip, I hadn't thought of it. And if you have wooden spoons, put them all in one container and your spatula is all in one container and then it makes them look like they're a decorative item on purpose as opposed to mixing and matching different elements. It's almost like when you display candles. When you put out candles that are all the same color, it looks much more tranquil. And when you have a sea of candles of all different colors, it just looks like chaos. So place your utensils on purpose. Have your fruit displayed on the counter in a bowl that you love that coordinates with the other colors. And then your dish towels matter. Even though we don't think about them, mm -hmm. coordinate your dish towel with the look that you want in your kitchen because they're typically out splayed <laughs> across the sink or across the counter. So pick those intentionally. And then also when you're displaying cookbooks, have cookbooks that coordinate with the color of the room that you want. And if, it, if you have a cookbook you love, by all means get the cookbook. Something you can do is just like I did at the bed here, turn the book covers inside out and you can make them all white and then they just blend away. And then if you have colors that don't really coordinate with the look. So hopefully that a few tips, but we'll cover that at length in one of our upcoming segments together. Okay. So Lou Ann said, what is the latest in dining room decor? All, all things. <laughs> right now, I because I go to all the different home decor markets across the country and even out of the country in mm -hmm. Europe, and I'm going several times a year, so I'm always looking at the cutting edge a couple years ahead of time before things actually come onto the market. And what I'm seeing strong, because it's here now and definitely here to stay, are natural woods. So with your dining table, a natural weathered looking wood or even a natural slab, like a live edge slab, mm -hmm. that's really in. Mixing of materials. So a wood top with a metal base, that's very in right now. And 
also mixing and match your dining chairs. They don't have to be identical. They should express your personality. So you could, for example, your captain's chairs at the end of the table, those could be two, one, mm -hmm. one type of chair, and then the center ones can be a different kind of chair and livable because we're using our dining rooms. I and mean, we're not using the formal dining rooms as much, but we use our dining rooms for our computers, kids' homework, for dining, something that's practical to you. The other piece of it that's really um, important now is a performance type fabric, not just now, but always, but a performance fabric on your dining chairs that is easily washable. Then you don't have to worry about real life happening while you're eating. You don't wanna to have to be um, overly cautious. Very good point. Okay, so Yvette said, I'd like to incorporate some plants into my living room decor. What's the best way? I wish we were in our living room because we, <laughs> I think in fact when we do the paint segment, okay, we're going to be in my living room. So we'll, I, can I table that question? Yes. Okay. Yes. Can, we'll get back to you on that because that's a great question and I, exempt, I have a lot of plants in my living room. So we'll talk about that coming up in the 12 o'clock hour. Great. So Kathy said, if you only had 500 to spend on a room remodel, what would you do to make the most impact? question and that's a very practical question that is typical of most of us. I would stick to the basics, the small items, first and foremost paint and I keep going back to that but paint is your biggest surface in your entire room so that's going to make the biggest impact. I would change out your light bulbs to make sure your light bulbs all match in color quality. Test out different lights too because some of the lights are really a bright white, some are a softer white, and your light quality will make a big difference when you walk into your room. If you have a dark room, I would invest in lamps too because layering your light really mm -hmm. makes your room come alive. And then I would look at how you ribboned your room so three different elements so mm -hmm. the ground with an area rug and believe it or not you can get some amazing machine made area rugs we have some mm -hmm. in our collection they're just coming out very soon and they're just a couple hundred dollars so that rug will really ground the room and bring that color in and then if you have decorative pillows try to invest possibly just pillow covers that fit your existing pillow because then you're not having to pay for another insert when you have a perfectly good insert there and then a throw and then your coffee table put a coffee table book right in the center that brings in some of the colors that you have in your area rug and in your pillows it's a simple way to not spend a lot of money and make a big impact in your room thanks for those very great suggestions okay so Kim said what's a good way of storing lots of shoes Welcome to my world, <laughs> my closet. Uh, oh, I, I've tried so many different things. So one of the things that I love is the, using the back of your closet door or your bathroom door, mm -hmm. and there are shoe um, pouch holders, I'm not using the right term, but you can actually hook it over a door in your bedroom, bathroom, or closet and have the shoes stored on either side of the door and it saves a lot of space and you can store them from the bottom all the way to the top with the pairs. That's really, really a practical way to do it. I get rid of all the shoe boxes because the shoe boxes take up extra space and maybe it doesn't look as organized, but I just get rid of those and you can find, you can build your own shoe storage. Like growing up, we had little boards that my mm -hmm. mom would put with mini bricks or cinder blocks in between them. And mm -hmm. so you could just build your own layers as tall as you want. If you have a nightstand that has drawers, you could put your shoes inside the drawers, but it doesn't get a lot of airflow. So there again, be careful that it doesn't get stuffy. And mm -hmm. if all else fails, you could have a basket in the side of the room that you put your shoes in the basket too. Okay. Under the bed, that's another place. <laughs> Okay. okay, so we have four more questions. Oh, okay. We'll okay. Go faster. And Tony said, and then you kind of addressed this a little bit, but what is the most important factor when selecting sheets? Thread count, material, style? We did just cover that. So, just briefly, mm -hmm. the thread count doesn't matter. So, just let that go out of your mind. What matters is the way the fabric that goes into the machine mm -hmm. and that they're a premium, nice quality thread. And then also the weaving facility, the, the way that the threads are woven in the, um, the sheet. So for example, we are in fact, we're working on some sheets that we're bringing out from Portugal that are going to be launching this fall. And so we've experimented again, like we did with our microfiber sheets, mm -hmm. we experimented over and over with different types of threads that ran through and the combination just because you have more threads does not make the sheet feel better. In fact, at times, the higher the thread count, the harder it is to get a premium weaving 
process. So get something that feels really good to your skin. That's the most important thing. Uh, so Latanya said, how can you make a room look larger? Mirrors, mirrors play tricks on your eyes and they draw you in light colors on the wall and also artwork on the wall. It's the opposite of what you would think, but if you have a painting or a photograph that has a view, for example, or a landscape or just anything with dimension, it makes the room appear larger. And I love this question from Jill, and I could use an answer for this. Any tips for how to convince a frugal husband that it is time to make a change? Oh, I love it. I actually have a chapter in my book for you. It's called Compromise. I, it, it's about how to remodel and survive your relationship. You are not alone is the one thing that I have to say because I think pretty much anytime you're living with somebody else, whether it's a husband, partner, spouse, anybody, mm -hmm. boyfriend or a friend, it's um, you're combining your resources and it's, it's tough to do. But I think it just, I actually go into that quite a bit here because it's such a common, Thing. It's really about compromise and picking the right time to have that conversation when you're not in the heat of the moment. And I think having your coming, putting your plan together, getting your budget, all your all your expenses in line, and then prioritizing those and trying to appeal to the practical side. Because sometimes the other person we're living with may not want a sofa or see the need for a sofa because when they were growing up a sofa wasn't valued in their family and maybe they prefer a large TV. So try to find <laughs> um, what their sweet spots are and cater to that and do a little bit of give and take. And last question and um, it says Jenny would like to know I would like to repaint my living room. The furnace is just a neutral tan so what color should I paint the wall? So let's table that one okay. and let's go over it in the 12 o'clock hour because that segment is all about paint and everything paint. So we'll definitely answer that question coming up. Great. And I did want to point out because we, our fans really enjoy hearing from you. They learn a ton. Um, Leanne said you have such great uh, ideas when it comes to decorating. Thank you, Leanne. I and, appreciate that. Uh, and Darlene, Darlene said, I love all of Jennifer Adams' products. So oh, that works you. perfect. Um, I appreciate talking that. about the giveaways and yes. the products that we have available on Costco.com, and we're going to be giving away wonderful something. Oh, we have our best selling. Oh, thank you. I have a, a little helper. <laughs> Thank you, Brie, with the rope. We have our, our best-selling sheet sets on Costco.com, and it's our eternal sheet set, and you can see it right here on this bed with all of our <laughs> sound asleep. It's amazing how um, dogs cater to soft textures. <laughs> if you have some, I'm sure you can relate. So this is our eternal fabric, and this is what we sell on Costco.com, and if you can feel it, it's- I know, it's so soft. So soft. And this has never been ironed, and it's fairly wrinkle resistant. Mm -hmm. And so the sheet sets come with a deep fitted pocketed sheet with a wide grip on the elastic and a flat sheet and, um, and pillowcases. So we're giving away the eternal sheet set to the first two people, Erica Richardson. Congratulations. You get this in the size and the color that you would like. And then Josie Leatherwood. Congratulations. You also won a set of the eternal collection sheets. And we're giving away one of our robes. And this robe you can find in our Costco road shows that go, um, you know, we're in each building approximately twice a year. Mm -hmm. And the robe, you can, uh, you'll get your size and your color. It's from the same soft fabric as our sheets. And it's, if it's year round, so it just feels great. I've, um, we spent several years developing know, this so robe soft. and it's just, um, I, I love it. It's been a great seller for us, knock on wood, um, that it continues. But Rebecca Hopkins, congratulations, you run a rope. So thank you for tuning in. We're gonna come back at the 12 o'clock yes. hour, Pacific time, at the top of the hour, so tune back in. Uh, we get asked constantly, or I get asked constantly, and Costco does as yes. well, how to pick out the perfect paint color in a white and in a gray, because those are the two most popular paint colors, it seems, right now for walls. And we're gonna demystify the process and give you tips that will work in any home, whether you own it or whether it's rented. So um, come on back, we'll see you shortly.